Hi, in this video I'll show you how to use a frequency distribution histogram to help you compare data. So let's say for example we're comparing prices. Maybe these are gas prices between city A and city B. You can see in city A I've got a little bit over a thousand uh, instances of, of gas prices. In city B we've got 266. Let's say that we're taking in uh, these different locations of gas prices from these two cities. Now in Excel 2016, there is actually a histogram chart. So if I go to insert, go to this histogram, it's going to create a chart for me. It's really nice and it does it very well. Let's say, we'll call this, uh, let's call this CDA, just make it easy. And, oops, press backspace. You've noticed that Excel has kind of pre predetermined our bins here. and I don't think there is a way to get out of that to, to make it your own, uh, You where it starts and where it ends. I could adjust the bin size if I go right click, I click the access, right click, and go and format access. I do have the ability to adjust the bin size, the bin width, this is what they call it. Maybe I'll make this 0.5. But there's not really an easy way to have the start of the bins and the end of the bins. You can see it starts at 1285 and ends at 4785. Now if we want to do some comparison, let's bring uh, city B here, go to insert and also do the same thing where I'm going to insert a histogram. And it looks like it didn't insert it because there's just too much data here. Let's bring this back. You can see if I scroll down, it looked at the whole area here, it's going all the way down to probably cell 1000 something. We only need this to go down to cell uh, 26B266. Let me change that here. I'll go to select data and see what happened here. Click edit. Yeah, it went to 1004. I just need to go to 266. Click OK. Click OK. And now we have our chart. I can also change the bin size here. Select that. Right click. Whoops, I'm already in there. Let's go to text options and look at our bin size. I was probably under access options. Under the bins, the bin width, we also want that to be 0 0.50, right? And you see here, we can kind of do a comparison. I need One more thing I need to do is probably adjust my Y axis here. Right click, format access, make the maximum 300 to align to that one press tab make sure uh, this one's this one's at 300 it's fine so I have my y-axis which is similar but my bins are a little bit different so it's not really an easy way to do a comparison and that's one of the things of using the histogram chart in here if you wanted to compare data not that great if you wanted to use the look at the data by itself that's fine but let's delete these another way to do it is we can kind of do it manually and using the histogram capability in the data analysis add-on. What I need to do first, let's find my min, my min and max. I'm going to find my min and max of these. So the min of city A and the min of city B. Let's see what they are. So equals min, select that data, control shift down arrow, press the F4 key to lock that in. Close parentheses, press enter. That's the minimum amount. That's the lowest amount here in city A. Let's drag this down here. And we're going to use max now. So that's the maximum amount here. 476 is somewhere. That's the maximum amount here in city A. Do the same thing for city B. Min, press tab to complete it. Go to B2. Control shift down arrow. Goes all the way to B266. Press F4 to lock that in. When I copy it down, it's not going to uh, change those reference cells. Press enter and drag the fill handle down here. Turn that into a max. All right. So now I can see that the lowest of these four uh, data points, the lowest is 1285 and the highest is 4726. So let's say that I wanted five bins. Yeah, what would be the bin width that I would need for looking at this data? So what I can do is I'll just put bin width here. That's going to be 
the highest number minus the lowest number here. Or if I was comparing a lot of different cities, I can just do the max of these four minus the min of these four. And divide that by, and I said earlier I want five bins, right? Press enter. Let me close this in parentheses so it performs that calculation first. Press enter. And the bin width, double click that to auto fit that. Let's go with seven bins. I think seven bins in this particular set of data made it a little bit closer to kind of like a easy number to separate it. 50 cents, right? 4.49, we can go 50. Now what I want to do is want to get my range of bins. So I'm going to turn this into a pivot table first. Select that data, go to insert, pivot table, and I'm going to put it on the existing location. That will be, let's put in H4. Click OK. Let's bring in my rows and bring in my values. And I'm going to group this one. Right click, group by, I'll start at one, two, let's see, one, two, eight, five. We're going to group, we're going to group by 0. 0.5. It's going to start at, let's start at one, 1.2 and we'll end at 4.8. Click OK. All right, we've got our data here. Do the same thing for this one. Go to Insert, Pivot Table, Existing Worksheet. Let's put this over here in the cell. Do the same thing. City B, and then my values there. Click on that cell, right click, group. We had 1.2, and then 4.8 doesn't really matter because I don't have anything greater than 4.8. And let's make that 0.5 and click OK. Now we've got our data here, right? 1.2, 1.2. So I can see that it ends at 4.2. Everything's the same here, right? 1 1.2, 1.7, 1.2, 1.7, 1.722, 2.2, 2.7, 2.7, 2.3. So I can actually get my bin sizes here. So we can see that we have our b potential bins here, right? So it goes all the way to uh, 4. I mean 5.2. It ends at 4.2, which this covers. Begins at 1.2, which this covers. So I can just bring this, this here. These are going to be my bins. Control V to paste that. And I just want the ending numbers there. So I just want to bring everything past that hyphen. I'm going to use a function called write. Look at this text. And there's only going to be three digit, three characters, one, two, three, that I need to pull out of there, right? So close parentheses. I got my 1.7 there. Double click the fill handle, that will copy it down. Let's turn all of this into numbers. Right now it thinks it's text because it's left the line. Let's turn this into a number. And we'll write a line that and control C to copy. And then paste again as values. It's gonna paste it as a number or it's gonna give you an error. But let's convert this to a number. It's no longer the formula there anymore, you see? It's not that right formula. Convert to number and it all becomes a number. Now we can use this as our array, list of bin arrays when we bring up our data analysis add-in. So I'll go under data and we have our data analysis add-in. It's one of those features that might not necessarily be there in Excel but you just have to turn it on. So you can just Google data analysis add-in and there'll be steps on how to turn it on probably from Microsoft.com. Let's give a title for it. This is our bins. So now let's bring in our data analysis feature. We want histogram there. Click OK. Our input range, the first one is going to be city A. Our input range, the first one is going to be city A. Click on cell A1, control shift down arrow. So select that. Our bin range, that's going to be the bins that we created earlier. So we select that. Our input ranges and bin ranges do have labels. Our output range, let's put that into cell R five here and we want a chart. Click OK and now we have our frequency table and our histogram. Let's do the same thing for a city A. I mean city B. This is city A. Let's go back up here. City A. And we want to do the same thing for city B. Go back to data. 
data analysis, histogram select it, click OK. And let's change this to city B, B1, control shift down arrow, selects that. Our bin range is still the same. We do have labels. We want a chart output. Our output range is going to be different now. So let's do our output range down here in cell, uh, let's say cell R20. Click OK. And now we've got our bins. We've got a histogram and kind of matches that. We want to make sure that we can compare it well. So let's make them both around the same size. Let's see if I can multi-select and make them both the same size. All right, so I press Control key and I selected both. Go into Format. Let's make this 3x5. Three, three, and then 5. Press Tab. Great. Now, all I need to do is just make sure the axes are aligned or they match each other. This is at 300. This probably should be at 300. Right click, format access, and they make that maximum 300. Our major units are going to be 50. That would be a good figure. I think these are in 50 to 2. So let's click there and see if it matches 300, and that's 50. That's fine. Close that. And now this is city B. As you can see, our frequency distribution histogram here, our axis, y axis is the same, and our x axis is the same. They start at both 1.7 and end uh, at that more, or maybe we can we could have removed that more. So we have kind of a decent way to do some comparisons and look at our. Uh, frequency distribution of our gas prices between city A and city B. As you can see here, the majority of city B's gas prices are in this range, 2.2 and 2.7, that, that bucket. Whereas with city A, it kind of ranges between 2.2, that's a lot high there, and everything else is 3.2 to 4.2. So that visually gives you an idea about it. If you want to look at the tables, the tables do give you a representation of the frequency of uh, those bins but of course a chart and a picture is worth a thousand words. It gives you a quicker way to do some analysis on uh, this kind of data. So here's a way that we can use a frequency distribution histogram to help us compare two sets of data. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.